Hi, I'm Alex Ruggieri and I'm from Champaign, Illinois. Uh, I've been in real estate for 43 years. Awesome. In your words, what's uh, the difference between um, equity marketing or exchanging or creative real estate and conventional brokerage? Well, the market is a lot larger when you add the dimension of equity marketing and exchanging. And the reason I say that is because of regular brokerage, you essentially have uh, one buyer, and that is a cash buyer only. And so it's just like if you're selling houses, you know, and uh, you're selling houses that are, uh, you know, a million dollars or more, there's a lot fewer people that can qualify to buy a million dollar home in your town, wherever you live, than there are that can buy, say, a $150,000 home. So there's many, many more people that can buy that. So you have a bigger market. Uh, and uh, if you're limiting yourself to cash buyers only, there's very few uh, in today's marketplace that can just buy cash or maybe bank loan and, and provide cash with financing uh, compared to opening it up to uh, the idea of exchanging for other property uh, or working with other equities. Now suddenly you've got a much bigger pool of participants in which to find a buyer. So it's a, a really good tool to get something done when things are stalled in the marketplace. So other than expanding the market, um, what other benefits are there to exchanging? Well, a lot of times people will ask a question, uh, oh no, I've got to sell because I need the money. And, and, but they don't ask themselves the next question, what are you going to do with the money? And so uh, when they are honest with themselves about that, you know, if they say something like, I'm going to put it in the bank, well, the thing about putting it in the bank, uh, why it's insured and it's safe and all that good stuff, there's nothing wrong with banks, but right now, they're not paying a lot uh, for your money. So if you put your money in the bank, you're lucky if you're getting 1%, you're lucky if you're getting 2% return on your money. Uh, when you're working with an exchange situation, it's very likely that you could take in an equity that is generating 8% or 9% or 10% or paper or whatever it is. And so now uh, when you answer the question, what are you gonna do with the money? Well, I was gonna invest it. You have a, an, a plethora of possibilities on what you could invest in because you're working uh, with an exchange market. Um, what type of people or brokers or clients are attracted to exchanging? Well, I think that uh, I, I made an observation last night at the uh, social hour uh, because I have a sponsor here who flew in from Dallas. They spent a lot of money to sponsor this event. Uh, they wanted to meet the exchangers and we're sitting there looking at the uh, group, right? And there's some people that are wearing a suit and tie. There's some people in their blue jeans. There's a couple people in their shorts and t-shirt, right? They're just sitting around having hors d'oeuvres and drinks and that kind of a thing. And I said, look around this room. I said, you're looking at the exchangers. And I said, these are people that some, some people may have one or two properties. I said, but they're all principals. Some people may have one or two properties. And the guy sitting next to them is worth $20 million. And I dare you to tell me which one it is. Nobody knows. Everybody here is just like regular people. But some of these people, I mean, there was a, a guy there last night, his family has 8,000 self storage units in Southern California. I mean, what's that worth? I mean, people here, the people that are attracted to exchanging are the, the biggest people in the industry and they're the smallest people in the industry. But they all share a common thread, and that is a creative energy to make things happen. What's the benefit of counseling a client? Uh, there are so many benefits to counseling, I, I guess I'd have to ask you how much time do you have? Um, the biggest problem most uh, real estate agents, if I can use the term, uh, have is that they don't understand the goals and the objectives 
of ownership. So they don't even know what ownership is trying to accomplish. And counseling will help tremendously. All right, I'll give you an example. People like stories, right? I'll tell you a quick story. So we had a fella who had a shopping center. Actually, he had multiple shopping centers all over the Midwest and they were all in great locations. And they were all fully leased. And he asked us to sell this shopping center down by St. Louis. And um, we flew to Las Vegas to meet him at ICSC. And uh, we had already had the listing and everything because uh, he, our, you know, our reputation alone got us the, the assignment. But I wanted to counsel with him. So I said, are you going to go to ICSC? Oh yeah, we go every year. Okay, great. So I, I go to ICSC also when we can. Right now we can't. But I flew in. We met with him in his booth. You know, we sat down at the table and I started doing a counseling session. And I just, I asked a question. Why are you wanting, I said, you have all these beautiful properties. Why are you wanting to sell? Well, you know, we want to make a change. You know, we want to go in a different direction. And I, really, but why? I don't get it. It's fully leased. It's well located. It's well built. It's beautiful. I have a beautiful picture of this thing. Well, you know, it's got partners, you know, and uh, disparate partners. And we're trying to, uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, they want to move out and this, that. And, the and I, I just kept counseling with him about why they really want to sell because I couldn't understand it. It was doing great. It was making money kind of thing anybody would want to own it was his brother-in-law that was his partner and it, he was dry he goes it's my brother-in-law and he's driving me crazy well if you don't counsel people and you don't know what their hot buttons are you don't know what they he says I've got to get out of this property because I gotta you know I want to go to Thanksgiving dinner again you know I want to go to Christmas and not you know have this problem so counseling will reveal the true motivations and also will educate. It does two things. It reveals those motivations and it allows you to educate uh, people as to all the options that they have. And it's very important you do that ahead of time so that when you come back from NCE or SEC or any of these meetings and you have all these options, they're prepared to look at options. Have you, uh, do you have a memorable deal? Do I, yes, I do. Um, as an example of options, I, I had a very uh, good friend who was a multi, multi-millionaire. He had his own plane, his own yacht, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, he passed. And uh, he left his tremendous estate to his children. And his children um, were just uh, in a position where they started selling things and kind of consolidating and, and all of that. And they had this one lot and it was on a power corridor, the same kind of power corridor you've seen in so many communities across the United States. But it was a little oddball shape and everything. And uh, they had it listed with another realtor and they couldn't sell it. And um, they uh, tried selling it for themselves for a year, couldn't sell it. So they asked me about it and uh, that we went to lunch and I said, well, had you thought of maybe using it, you know, adding some cash and, and using it? So I gave them, I gave them a list of 25 things that they could do to help me sell their property as part of my counseling session. And they looked at it and they said, well, 25 things. I said, look, I don't expect you to do 25 things, but check off on the list of what you can do two or three or four things. And let's talk about that. Anyway, they checked off two or three or four things that they could do. And one of them was add cash because they had cash. Um, and uh, they, but they said, we can add cash. What does that mean? I said, well, you could give me your lot and you could give me $100,000 and let me go to a marketing session, see what I could do, see if I could get some offers. And they, they're like, well, we could do that, but why? Why would anybody do that? I said, because they want your cash. And he's like, I don't get it, you know. I said, well, let me go to the marketing session, see what I can do. So they gave me the off authority to offer in uh, $100,000 in cash. All right. So we, their lot was free and clear. It was $350,000. And I said, well, I have $350,000 lot and $100,000 in cash. 
I came back from the NTE meeting with nine offers. They were blown away, as I said earlier, bringing them options. And they narrowed it down to one or two that they worked, and they ended up trading their lot into a medical office building in Indianapolis, less than two hours from their office. And they didn't add 100,000. They added 300,000 in cash. So they basically invested $650,000 in this medical office building. Now think about it, the lot was costing them. Even though it was free and clear, they're paying taxes, they're paying somebody to mow it every week, uh, you know, they're having all of those expenses going out. And now they were getting 9% on that 350000 which at the time you could get less than 1%. You were getting 0.9% at the bank. So now they're getting 10 times what they can get at a bank for a lot that was sitting there for a couple of years after their dad died doing nothing. Plus they took money out of the bank, 300000 that was getting less than 1% and put it into this medical office building where now they're getting 9% on that. So they're, they're a total swing from money going out and not making any money on their equity to making 9% on 650,000, it was incredible. You do something like that for someone, they're excited to pay your commission. Absolutely, I made $20,000 on the sale of that lot. I mean, the, it's like you guys are magicians. Yeah, well, and that's just the beginning. I mean, you talk about a memorable story. 30 days later, the guy who took the lot in the developer, he called, he said, you know, I took that lot in as part of the deal, um, but uh, I really don't need it. Would you sell it? And I go, well, my sign's still on it. So I basically sent him a listing agreement. He agreed to pay me my fee to sell it again. And I got a phone call from another exchanger uh, like two months later saying, hey, do you still have that lot? Yeah, would your guy consider putting that as a down payment on this new McDonald's, you know, that I just built? Well, yeah, I think he might consider. So I ended up sending the new McDonald's, selling that using the lot as a down payment. The guy who sold the new McDonald's ended up buying a $6 million CVS. I got 80,000 on that. I got 60,000 on the McDonald's. 30 days later, the guy who took the lot in called me. He says, you know, I took that lot in. Uh, I don't really want it. Do you want to sell that for me? I said, well, I don't know. My sign's still on it. I took a lot that hadn't been sold in years. They couldn't move it, they couldn't do anything with it. And I did multiple transactions. I made a quarter of a million dollars off that lot. And you know what? My sign's still on it. <laughs> do you feel like there's more like a level of camaraderie or teamwork in these rooms? Yeah, I mean, I think the whole idea of being here, you say, in these rooms, because we've been doing a lot of Zoom meetings and things like that uh, because of COVID, but uh, it it only works because people have relationships, because people know each other, they like each other, and they trust each other. No transaction ever happens unless somebody likes you and trusts you, okay? They may like you, they may love you, but they don't trust you, no deal. And they may trust you, they may think, yeah, you're an okay guy, but they don't like you, no deal. So you have to build relationships and you learn by coming here what people are good at, what they're not good at, how you can leverage their strengths uh, against your weaknesses and how you can bring your strengths to bear to help them. And it, it really is a kind of a golden rule society. I mean, everybody doing to others, everybody's trying to help each other uh, and uh, you get outside of your market, it's a lot less competitive. People aren't trying to you know, go behind your back to get a listing. They're trying to help you sell your listing. And they don't care because they're not in your market. They're here to help you and you're here to help them. So it's really great. If a new broker is coming in, do you think there's a level of acceptance and embrace? Yeah, I mean, I think people have to earn that. You know, I don't, I don't think you just show up once or twice and expect everybody to start doing business with you. Uh, but I think there's a general, uh, openness to the group uh, and uh, I always say I like people until they give me a reason not to and so we've had people come to the group you know that uh, you know don't pan out you know and they're not invited back you know because they don't uh, espouse a high uh, level of integrity 
uh, or uh, they're doing things that aren't compliant with, um, you know, SEC rules, uh, broker law, uh, you know, all of those things. I mean, anybody who doesn't behave is not really welcome uh, long term. But most people who are uh, willing to be uh, compliant with all the laws and regs and that kind of a thing and are honest and have high integrity, they thrive in environments like this. Awesome. Is there anything uh, interesting that you've either taken as a commission or a down payment or something like that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I took stock one time at a company. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um, some people are like, go all, <laughs> they're like, I'm taking guns, I'm taking, you know, all this Oh, stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I haven't done anything like that. But uh, uh, part of the problem is, I mean, I've got a partner and a broker, so I can't just say, oh, yeah, I'll take your motor home, you know, because what? how do I pay him? So, but I've taken stock. All right, this is the last question I ask everyone. Do you like your job? I love my job. I don't ever plan on retiring. I mean, there's just no reason to. I'm 64 now, and uh, I mean, I mean, some of my heroes have been 65, uh, 85, and 90, you know, and building, uh, you know, a new building or doing a deal, you know, the week they died, you know. I mean, you got to have a reason to get out of bed, you know. And uh, working with people, helping people, is a good reason, and building wealth for your family, you know, legacy, that kind of thing is all good stuff.